I, it's Sandy Wiley. And the next holiday after New Year's is Valentine's Day. So I thought, what more appropriate thing to talk about for our mental health discussion today than broken hearts? <laughs> yes, I mean, all the Valentine's chocolate boxes are lining the CVS shelves already. <laughs> So, every one of us has had a broken heart. And I want to discuss what to do, how to get through that initial uh, phase of feeling like your whole world has just dropped off the face of the earth. Because that's how it felt. So my first broken heart was I fell madly in love with this man, 11 years older than me. He was handsome as hell. He looked like a male model. He was a doctor. Um, he had a million dollar condo. He had, you know, a, a convertible S2000 Honda, sport, shiny black sports car. He had big muscles and six pack and... I just was crazy in love with him. I mean, I never felt that kind of chemistry before. Um, I met my husband when I was only 18, and we were both virgins. And it was never, um, it was more of a friendship, me and my husband, um, than like these sparks. So this guy was like, there was so many sparks. It was like sticking your finger in an electric socket, like whoosh, whoosh. <laughs> yeah, electrifying. <laughs> That's how it was. And um, I was going to leave my husband and son and move in with him. He only lived like 10 minutes away. My From my house to his condo was an exact exactly 10-minute drive. So I always felt I could still see my son anytime I wanted to because we only lived 10 minutes away. I was going to move in with him. Um, we even went to couples therapy. Um, and, you know, we were together <laughs> three years. Well, the first year <laughs> we weren't having sex, but for two years we were in a, um, we in a sexual relationship. And he told me that he had never made a commitment with any woman before. That um, he wasn't sure that he could do it because he never... Um, took that leap <laughs> and I believed him like a fool <laughs> um so we went to couples therapy and he said I don't know if I've never been committed in a committed relationship with a woman I don't know if I can you know do this um I love you but I don't know if I can go through with it and all that then one day I I was going through his drawers there was something in me that told me don't trust him so I, while he was at work, I went through his desk drawer, and guess what I found? A big picture of him and another woman with the year 2005 in big, bold numbers under it. I wonder why, 2005. And then I went fishing a little deeper, and guess what I found? A gift receipt at, for a jewelry store for an $8,000 diamond ring. Now, I put those two things together, right? This guy was married. And the funny thing is, when I confronted him with it, he denied it over and over again, even though I showed him the proof. Can you imagine showing someone proof? And I keep saying, I was never married. I wasn't married. So I broke up with him. I was devastated. I cried and cried and cried. Ever since then, God, it's been six years. I go to bed at 7 o'clock at night, you know, because um, there's nothing to stay up for. I just felt my whole world, you know, imploded in. I was just like so in love for the first time. And <laughs> I know that's crazy. I always, I'm a late bloomer. <laughs> But, like, I, I just kept drinking heavy and heavy. I kept drinking heavy every day. And I just was so devastated that he lied to me, you know. I thought all this time 
that we went to couples therapy. He was trying to sort, you know, figure his life out, sort it out. But he wasn't. He was just lying the whole time. And it just, I was just devastated. And I'm sure that's how, you know, you are when you have a broken heart. You just, it's like a deep, deep depression. I didn't want to do anything. I just kept getting drunk every day. I still drink very heavy every day. I mean, and I mean, not, but before I met him, uh, you know, I didn't drink at all. <laughs> See what love can do to you. It can destroy you. But what I'm trying to say is you got to allow yourself that time to grieve and no one, and no one can, um, tell you any different. A lot of people will say, oh, come on, you'll get over it. Time heals all wounds. Well, it, it's never done that for me. Never. Um, time doesn't heal all wounds. My son who has severe brain damage, he got brain damage when he was four years old. Okay. He's still the same. He has not improved at all. And now he's 27 years old. Did time he make him better? Time heals all wounds. It didn't. It didn't heal that wound at all. I still carry a heartache in me every day. So time does not heal wounds. Don't let some, someone who says that obviously has not been hot, um, had their <laughs> life destroyed or their heart broken because they would never tell you that. That people who try to you know they're only doing that for their own benefit because it, your heartbreak makes them feel uncomfortable. So they'll say, oh, well, things will get better. Oh, it's for the best. Right. Or t time heals all wounds. Right. These people don't know what they're talking about. And they only add to your trauma. Do you know why they add to your trauma? Because they're not validating you. They're not validating your feelings. That's the worst thing in the world, I think, is when someone doesn't validate your feelings. When they tell you things will get better, time heals all wounds. It's really for the best. It was no good. That's not validating your feelings. And that's the worst thing, I think, personally, when someone doesn't validate my feelings. I don't want to have nothing to do with that person because they don't know what the hell they're talking about because obviously they haven't been through trauma. Otherwise, they wouldn't be so invalidating. I guess the best way to, to heal from that devastation, that devastating heartbreak that you know we have we fall in love we get our hearts broken I mean it's happened to all of us right it's just to you know try to get through each day the best you can it's that's different from for every one of us so the way you get through each day the best way you can is going to be different from the way I get through each day sometimes just getting out of bed for someone and brushing their teeth is the best way they can and someone else will look at it and think that's that's nuts you know what'd you do you just got you just brushed your teeth all the, you know what I mean they don't understand that was the best that that person could do at that time right I always try to keep very busy <laughs> um and I think talking about it I'm a writer so I've written and I'll put the link to my book about this relationship down below um but that's that's what i try to do i write because i'm a writer i i do these videos so i talk about my pain and um i try i exercise i get out in nature i try to do the best i can every single day it might not be the best for someone else they might look at me and and think i'm nuts and a lot of people do they write nasty things about me but it's the best I can do for me. It's not going to be the same for you. Remember, it's not cookie cutter. A broken heart isn't cookie cutter. Someone doesn't come along with a cookie cutter and, and do this to every broken heart. You know, so they all come out in the same shape and size. That's not how it works. So we've got to deal with it, you know, the best way we can. And that's different from for each and every person it's gonna you know it's always gonna be on your mind you're always gonna um that song will come on the radio and it will remind you of him or you'll see someone who looks just like that woman that you were in love with or 
um, there'll be something on TV, right? Or an old movie that you saw <laughs> will come on. Um, the first movie that we saw together was Baccarat. About that um, artist, that black artist, um, Baccarat. Um, who was in that? That was um, David Bowie played. Um, who, who was he in that movie? Andy Warhol. David Bowie played Andy Warhol. He did a really good job, too, in that movie. And that's the first movie we saw. So, you know, if I see that in a store or something, the DVD for that. that You know, so those reminders will always be there. It'll always be there. And it's just something that, you know, is going to be a part of you for the rest of your lives. But you just have to learn to live, you know, to live with it. That's what I would say to someone instead of saying time will heal it is learning to live with it the best way that you can. And that is different, like I said, from from other people. You're not going to live with it the best way that this person can. You're going to live with it the best way that you can live with it. And that might be, you know, in stages. Some days you can, you know, get out of bed, brush your teeth, and go for a walk. So that was better than than last week where you just got out of bed and stayed in your pajamas all day. You know what I mean? Those baby steps, you can't really can hold a you know, comparison to someone else because they're not you. That's what I think most of us get in trouble with. I think what we do is we try to compare ourselves to other people, you know, or think that we should be getting over something. Everyone, it's a fast-paced society and everyone wants everything, you know, already done yesterday. Oh, I should be over this by now. You know, or compare, look at that person. That person is fine. That person got on with their life. It doesn't work out like that. That's not real life. That's what I'm trying to say. It's not real life. So you have to, you know, don't put, don't be so hard on yourself. Why are we always the hardest? We're the hardest on ourselves. I'm telling you, don't be so hard on yourself. Just, you know, try to do it in baby steps. Do the best you can on each day. Maybe, you know, today is one of those bad days, you know. And you just don't have the strength, you know. But don't be hard on yourself. Maybe tomorrow you'll have a little more, you know. You'll be able to do a little bit more, you know. Or maybe next week. Don't look at it like that. Just look at it as like putting one foot in front of the other slowly um, to get through this because it can be devastating especially when someone betrayed you especially if you think your whole relationship was built on a lie like I did with me like this guy was just stringing me along why do you tell me he never made a commitment with anyone else why were we in couples therapy trying to figure out this relationship I had a friend of mine <laughs> laugh at that he goes why are you in couples therapy you know, that's for married people who've been married like 20 years. And, you know, he goes, just break up with the person, right? Usually in a relationship, if it isn't that old, if it's only a year or two old, you don't go to couples therapy. You just break up. It's not working out. Usually people go to marriage counseling or couples therapy if they've been in long-term relationships and they want to try to, and they have children or they have a house, property, and they want to see if can they salvage this. But in a new relationship, you don't have no children or you don't have no property. You don't have anything to set. You know what I mean? It's new. It's only like a year or two. That's how it was for us. We were only together for like, um, yeah, a little over a year when we went. And my friend said, why don't you just break up at that point? Why do you, what do you have to, you know? But I thought because he was so in love with me. And I was so in love with him that we wanted to try to make it work out somehow. And I felt like such a fool when I saw that. Like, I mean, that's happened to me over and over again. People don't, people don't show you their true colors. People hold a lot of secrets. I had a girlfriend who was married and she had a son who died of cancer at 18 months old. I never knew about it till years into the friendship. I only knew she was married to her second husband and she divorced him and she had a son with him who was the same age as my son. But I never knew she was married before this, before him to another man 
her first husband, and she had a son with him who died. I didn't know that. She never told me. I thought she was divorced once. She was divorced twice. And the first time, she had a child with him. Never told me. Never. So what I'm trying to say is there's a lot of things you don't know about people. Even people that you're very best friends with for years because people keep secrets. People, my husband says, there's really not too many people that you can take all the filters away. People filter themselves. Yeah. Um, I filtered myself from everyone except for three. Well, let me see. My husband, my father-like psychologist, Dick, Jim, my lover, the one that <laughs> broke my heart and, and I found out he was married, and my son, Austin. So that's four people in my life, four, that I, that I filter myself from, that, that I had. Everyone, I mean, that I had not filtered. I'm sorry I said it wrong, that I did not filter myself. I mean, I, there was no filters. Everyone else, especially my best friend, Holly, I'd be angry at Holly, um, but I was afraid to speak up to her. Why was I afraid to speak up to her? Because I, her, her son and my son were best friends. And my son really was crazy about her son. And he used to go to sleepovers at her house with, and there'd be a lot of kids his age. And, and he really loved it. And if I were to not be friends with her, then our sons would be affected, see? So it wasn't just my relationship with her. It was my son's relationship with his best friend. Because they were too young to get together without their, their mom, their parents, taking them back and forth. See, they're only like six, seven, eight, you know? It wasn't like they're older and they could get together without me or Holly. The thing is, you know, she she promised to um, pick us up. It was a winter, freezing cold day. And we were um, school was canceled and we were going to go sledding. So she said, I'll pick you up at one o'clock and we'll go sledding. And my son's all excited. You know, he's ready. He's got his coat and hat on. It's one o'clock. Oh, I'm running late. Then it's two o'clock. And my son is crying. I'm calling her, where are you? Where are you? Oh, I'll be there soon. I'm running late. It's like, my son is crying. I want to go sledding. He's got his coat on for over an hour. She promised to be there at one o'clock. Oh, I was rip shit angry. It's two o'clock. It's 2.30 now. My son is, you know really beside himself. Are we going to go sledding? You promised me. So I said, come on, we'll walk there. Mind you, it's a half an hour walk to the park. She was supposed to come with her son, pick me up, and we were supposed to get in her warm big van and drive over there and go sledding. But she lied. So me and my son had to walk in the freezing cold. Can you imagine? After hours of waiting for her, she finally got her ass to the park. And I had to swallow all my anger because if I started screaming and got angry at her, where were you? My son was crying. Then she'd say, she'd take her son and say, come on, I'm not going to listen to this. Then my son would be devastated, right? Because he wouldn't have her son to play with. So I had to suck it up for my son and not say a word. Well, I'm not friends with her today, but... Because my son is an adult, her son's an adult, they're not even friends, but, you know, my son can make his own, own friends. He doesn't need me, that's what I'm trying to say. He do, it doesn't rely on me. That, his friendship with her son relied on my friendship with her. Because if we were enemies, we're not going to see each other. That means our sons wouldn't see each other. You see the trap I was in? <laughs> it was horrible. I would never get in that kind of trap again. But I was young and naive and I didn't know any better. What I'm trying to say is we put filters. We don't always show people, you know, we filter ourselves. We don't show people our real, true selves. And that's what you got to be very weary of in the beginning of, even after years of a relationship. What is this person hiding from me? Because believe me, they always hide something. They always have some filter, right? It's like, you know, they might have like 10 filters. And during the years, each filter will slide off. This filter will slide off, but there's still something behind another filter, okay? You don't see everything. I don't think you know someone totally until you live, this, live with them through every circumstance, okay? What I mean by that is 
not for the good times when someone gets sick, right? Um, when someone loses a job, when um, different things like that, when someone is very angry, when you get into a fight. That's what I'm saying. You don't know someone until you live with them through every circumstance, not through the good times and happy times, but through the sickness and um, loss of money, right? Desperation. When they're angry about someone, see someone in all different states, not just when they're smiling and happy. See them when they're angry, when they're disappointed. And it takes years and years. You do not know someone in a year or two. Sorry, you shouldn't get married to someone if you only know them a year or two and you haven't lived with them. You should live with them first. That's what I believe. I mean, I was from the old school. Why buy the cow if you get the milk for free? That's a bunch of baloney, right? Who says that nowadays, right? I think that you should live with someone. Um, don't buy property with them either. Just... Do not buy property or make a commitment with someone unless you live with them and seen them through all different circumstances. Because you've got to take those filters away. But anyway, broken hearts, yeah. You just don't be hard on yourself. You can get through it. <laughs> I'm here cheering you on. Every little step, every little baby step is still a step. Just think of it like that. Just like I got on the scale today, guess what I lost? two ounces i didn't say two pounds i gotta lose about five pounds i didn't say i lost two pounds two ounces i said are you out of your mind like what that's like nothing <laughs> but i said to myself you know what you still lost something even if it's two baby little ounces it's still something so why be so hard on myself, right? The holidays came, I ate, I drank, I gained a lot of weight. <laughs> but I lost two ounces. I could have gained two ounces or I could have just stayed stagnant and, and not lost anything at all. But we all go through broken hearts and hopefully it, does, you know, it doesn't turn you into a cynic like me. <laughs> but still, you got to be careful. To, I learned that the hard way. Be very cautious of... Um, so anyone new be, be cautious because like me, you know, people don't show you the whole package, right? They filter it. That's what I've learned in life. People filter and you don't know that until you go through a lot of experiences with him, with them. Okay. So don't be too hard on yourself. And I hope this Valentine's Day though, it's, <laughs> it's over a month away, but in the stores, it's still blaring, right? All the heart box. Um, chocolate boxes you know and all the the stuff they have out there so until next time take care and treat yourself nice and don't be too hard on yourself